Hey, good Friday afternoon, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I have a serious update for you guys. I know we're going into the weekend. I know the Euro has been trending for a very long time, as well as other weather models hinting at where this is going. Now, remember, we do not quite have a surface low yet, so we do not have the cone of uncertainty just yet. So you got to be aware, because if you just look at a forecast and go away for the weekend, and come Monday, you could be looking at a total landfall, or Tuesday, a landfall, different area than what you've seen on Friday. Matter of fact, if you see for right now, we do have an Invest. It is Invest 93L. It is at 22 miles per hour winds, and it is moving northwest at 10 miles per hour. And it's very important, because if you look so far at the uncertainty path, now so far this one going towards Houston, you can take this one out, because this trough is coming in still from the west, it will not get pulled to the west. It's going to get pulled to the north, northeast, when it finally gets pulled. The issue we're having today is that we don't know if this trough is coming from the west, from the center, or from the east, which will determine where this cyclone gets pulled towards. Now, you can see where the locations are for right now. So far, it has it going from New Orleans all the way to southern Florida. So this whole region needs to be on alert because we don't know exactly where this is going. It could go that way, it could go this way, it could turn even sooner. Matter of fact, the latest information is showing potential hurricane landfall. Now, I've been talking about that last few videos. We all know when you get a tropical wave in this Gulf of Mexico, it's so warm. A tropical storm is a given. Being a tropical storm, getting close towards landfall with where this upper level low is going to go with this trough, and make it increase in speed and intensity and the warmer water is closer towards landfall, it will rapid intensify at the last minute. We've seen it so many times. I've seen it so many times on Ian, seen it so many times on Ida. We all seen Michael come straight up here and this is not gonna be no Michael. I just wanna let y'all know now, I've seen it already out there. The fear mongers are pushing it hard. This is not gonna be no Michael. This is not going to be no Cat 5. It's not even going to be a major hurricane. At best, maybe a strong Cat 1. Maybe even on the low end of a Cat 2. It depends how slow this does move. But my point is, is stay alert to these updates, guys. Now, so far what we have is we do have the invest. And you can see all the convection. All the blue is all lift. There's a lot of convection going on. And you see there's none going on on the southern side or all the way down here. Now, if you look at the higher elevations, you can see there's a lot of dry air that's being pulled into the middle latitude levels, being shoved right into the bottom of this storm. So it is trying to grow. It is trying to get circulation, but it can't right now. It's still feeding the atmosphere with precipitation. It's trying to put all this readiness in the atmosphere to get these thunderstorms roaring so I can get all the way around and get a surface low. Until then, the trend has been and this will travel a little further to the west. Now, the further it goes to the west, the further north is going to push and be even more impacts. So what I'm trying to say is I'm glad Florida, all y'all that got ready, thank you so much. I'm so glad you prepared already. That's such a great thing. We have more people that need to also be potentially prepared for possible impacts. But let's get to it, let's get to the information so you can see exactly what you can alert for, and I'm gonna let you know what the latest information is and what the possibilities are, because it's starting to look a little bit broad. So please share the video, please like the video, help me get this out to more people in the public before they go off for the weekend. Now, real quick, I don't want people to forget about you. My heart's still going out to you guys. Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania still without power. Matter of fact, Pennsylvania is looking better. Ohio, 139,000 without power. Michigan, 400,000 still without power. And you can see where these storms hit. It just went straight over south southeastern Michigan, straight across northeastern Ohio. It was a very nasty storm. A lot of damages, a lot of people got hurt, and we even lost lives, like I said earlier. So God bless all of you. I do hope you do get your power back soon. I'm still thinking about you. But I will be quick for you. So the update is a chance for a tropical depression in 72 hours, 100%, guys. As you go four days, five days, it goes towards Florida, six days, still trending that is going towards Florida. Only thing is, we don't know if it's going to be on the left side of this or the right side or just dead center as it moves all the way to the southeast. Even a chance for a tropical storm still showing in four days, the chances will grow greatly. 
five days even stronger and six days. Now it's bringing all the way up to a 90% chance for a tropical storm at least, guys. Take that with a grain of salt. Once it gets closer towards shore, it will be that rapid intensification at the last minute. I'm still showing either a very strong tropical storm or a low-grade hurricane is still possible. And when you look at an update with cyclone locations, you can see literally in 36 hours, 48 hours, it takes 48 hours for it to finally start coming together and all the way to almost three days before you finally start getting a strong surface low and we start getting something moving as we go into the 28th. Now, as we go four days away, it starts moving to the northern side. North, northeast has been the trend still, but still in five days, you have a pretty broad area of where this could go. And I will show you why in just a moment. And as you keep on going, you can see it's still going to get pushed to the east, northeast, whether it makes landfall towards Alabama or whether it makes it towards Florida, it will get pushed to the east, northeast. Now, this is where a little bit of concern comes in because now GFS is on track as well. And if you take a look at it, you'll see it gets pulled straight north, intensifies to a hurricane on landfall, showing it a little bit further to the west. Now, if you remember with the Canadian I showed you earlier, the further west that it goes, be more precipitation on landfall, more people getting affected by the flooding as it still curves out to the east, northeast, but it brings a lot of impacts towards the southeast, a little bit different than what we've been seeing lately, especially by GFS as well. Now you can see on your 500 millibar vorticia, you still get that low pressure and it still creates that trough right here, but it creates it a little bit sooner and pulls it straight north right into Alabama and it grows all the way into Texas with this big old trough pulling that straight north right into Alabama. So I'm gonna show you all the model differences that we do have, but look at this extensive rainfall flooding could come out of it if it goes just a little bit further to the west. Not only does it hit Florida, now it's hitting multiple states with serious flooding. And on that run, that would bring anywhere from 70 to 80 miles per hour wind gusts, but on land, it'd be looking at high 60s to 50s and slowly going towards 40s as it goes towards Atlanta, a little bit towards Tennessee. But a big area of some wind damage could be coming with that if that was to play out. Also, the latest on the Euro, still showing that low pressure will still be in the same place. Still will pull it north, but the latest trend has been a little bit further to the west, but still showing it's going to curve out east, northeast. And that block won't do too much. It shows that block will just stop it for a moment, then it'll move on. And hopefully when it does that block, it's not closer towards land to where it's just winding for 24 hours in a certain area. So we got to watch out for that as well. Still showing the same thing that the Euro has been showing. It has gotten a little bit closer on landfall. This looks almost like what the Canadians seeing this morning, guys. 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts going a little bit further inland. And still showing the heavy rainfall, but just like the Canadian this morning, showing it further inland as well, even heavier. Matter of fact, the latest Canadian shows the same thing as the Euro. One little thing different is it shows that it actually breaks off another surface low in the Gulf that sits there for a little bit, guys, as that goes by the Carolinas a little bit more inland just like it's been showing ever since this morning. Still bringing the same wind impacts that we've seen this morning. Almost exactly the same. And still showing a very heavy rainfall coming further inland. Going 7 to 10 inches of heavy widespread flooding. And you can see how the Euro's starting to agree a little bit. And as these two kind of come together, meet in the middle a little bit, it's starting to look a little bit more and more concerning. This is going to affect multiple states, not just Florida. Even the latest on the GO satellite does show that western start on that surface low, but it still confirms that it's going to agree right where the GFS is going, right where the Canadian is going. This is a little bit further to the west. The GFS was showing towards Alabama. Euro is showing towards the bend of Florida. It has been for a long time. It's starting to come a little bit further to the west, not much. But now it's starting to show maybe over here towards the panhandle of Florida. And remember, Eastern impacts, it would affect the whole state. So you got to remember, this is starting to trend now somewhere from Alabama towards the bend of Florida. You cannot take your eyes off this system yet. I really don't like the name. It's not a tropical model, but it's the only somewhat high resolution model that we can see that can see four days away. 
So as we start to look, it starts bringing up that northern push. See where it's starting to head towards? Just like where the GO satellite is hitting that a little bit east of what the GFS is starting to hit at. Already having itself as a tropical storm and strengthening up and it didn't even leave the building yet. Now when you look at 500 millibar vorticity, this is the worrisome part, is that you can see that it's starting to bring that troughing further to the west. If it brings the furthest west that this troughing begins, the further to the west is going to start pulling to the north. So if it stays right there over Louisiana, it will pull that straight north. You see how it's going straight north and it's not going on a northeastern pull. It's going more on a northern pull straight towards Alabama and maybe start drifting a little bit towards Alabama, Georgia state line right on the panhandle right here. That's what I'm feeling so far. But thank you so much for your time. God bless you and your families. Hope you have a great Friday night out there. I will do an update tomorrow morning just so you know what the latest information is so you could tan. So please and get prepared for all the serious flooding that is coming their way. But it won't be one tomorrow afternoon. It is Sabbath. I am going to go spend it with my family and take my kids out to go have some fun. Amen. Thank God I can do that. <laughs> But I will be back on my afternoon updates once I start back on Sunday. But have a great night tonight, guys. I want to sing a quick praise for y'all. Psalm 113, 1 through 3. We should always praise the Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord name is to be praised. Amen. <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Be safe. God bless you and your families. I will update you tomorrow morning so we know what's going on with the newest information. And remember, watch out for the fear mongers because I see them already pushing out their agenda on people. And the more you watch their videos, they're going to think that you like it and they're going to get even worse with it. I mean, come on, you bringing out Hurricane Michael? Not cool, man. Not cool at all. I wish the best for every single one of y'all. Remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in Heaven, Yahweh. And I pray He keeps y'all safe every day of y'all life. You and your families. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen! Keep everyone here safe, Father. Everyone that hears this message, their neighbors, their friends, and their families, please keep them safe. Amen.